Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julie Zhang. This is Suman Chang, and this is Vandana Jananula. And today, we're going to be talking about propaganda in North Korean media. So, did you hear about the recent shooting at Chapel Hill, or about the German co-pilot who commandeered a plane into the French Alps? If you did, it was most probably through some form of media, whether that was a news channel, social media, or a newspaper. While we hear about news from all over the world, people in North Korea repeatedly learn to praise their leader and the regime through their limited media. So exactly why is this a problem to us? The media has a substantial impact on our knowledge and opinions, but we are often unconscious of this fact because media has naturally integrated into our daily lives. This is, it is a saying for North Koreans, except its impact is more severe, for it deals with manipulating the people's minds into believing more than something more than just exaggerated about their own country. The use of propaganda, misleading information used to promote a certain idea, has immense effects on North Koreans. Because, of, because the public is only exposed to the North Korean side of everything, it is only natural that the citizens develop limited that the citizens develop restricted opinions about the world. For example, North Koreans believe that life in North Korea is a paradise and that the leader is a god. Everyone in the world, no matter what race or gender, deserves to have basic human rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted by the United Nations in 1948 promotes all nations to act to reach the standards stated in the declaration. Many have done so, but North Korean citizens fall way behind when it comes to withholding human rights, especially those regarding health, freedom of speech, and exemption from extreme punishments. They are so oppressed and heavily influenced by media, many do not even know the concept of human rights. This is a problem that is formed by propaganda usage in the North Korean media. The propaganda in North Korean media is evident in the news and entertainment industry as well. Both aspects of media are heavily influenced and controlled by the government. For example, this is a popular children's TV show called The Teletubbies. In North Korea, they edited the version so that Kim Jong-un was the son, when otherwise it was a child. This shows that the media, controlled by the government, is pushing people at a young age to idolize their leader. Since 0.9% of the population is under 4 years old, this is a very effective way since it will reach many. These children, once they grow up into adults, will therefore follow their leader completely, without knowing any of Kim Jong-un's political stances or actions, as that's how they were raised since they were children. This is a North Korean film called Flower Girl, and it was made in 1972 and depicts the country under Japanese occupation. It shows Kim Jong-il sung predecessor to Kim Jong-un and, and the Korean Revolutionary Army saving the day by defeating the Japanese. The government uses propaganda in movies because it will reach a large crowd and movies are widely like source of entertainment. Most other movies in North Korea are like this one, with, with the leader and his commanding army beating other nations, mainly the US and Japan. The viewers of these movies will therefore have a negative view on these countries without knowing any real background information as that's all the knowledge that they have been given by their government. The informational media in North Korea is authoritarian in that it is the sole national media in the country and it is under strict government censorship. Korean Central News Agency was established in 1946 and a talk given it at the officials at KCNA reflects their ideology to manipulate the fact to fit the liking of their supreme leader in 19. In order to become a powerful ideological weapon of our party, the Korean Central News Agency must provide a news service in accordance with the idea and intention of the great leader and comrade Kim Il-sung. The agency generally only provides good news to encourage its people and to project a positive image of growth. This is a problem because it, because it limits North Korean netizens from forming their own independent, unaffected opinions and perspectives on world affairs and contemporary events, as they are unable to analyze it from different angles.
The Press Freedom Index is the degree of freedom that journalists, news organizations, and citizens enjoy in a country, and the efforts made by the authority to respect and ensure that freedom. According to Reporters Without Borders, in 2014, North Korea scored 179th in the rank among 180 countries, with the rank of 81.96. It is the second lowest in the world, right after Eritrea, with the rank of 84.83. This trend of Eritrea and North Korea being the last two in the rank has been upheld for years despite the international pressure to alter this concrete position. The interesting thing about this report is the upper position of Syrian Arab Republic as circled in red square box. Despite the series of uprisings that Syria has undergone since 2011, North Korea still manages to hold lower rank in the rank of freedom, uh, rank of Press Freedom Index, despite the fact that Syria is undergoing a national crisis. So how do we know all this information? So how do we know all this information about North Korea, a country that is so close to the rest of the world? Well, a lot of the information comes from people who have experienced the propaganda and dictatorship first-handedly, the, the defectors. One defector, Yamin Park, who currently works as a human rights activist, has experienced the cruel limitations of media access in North Korea. In North Korea, when she was a teenager, like many other teenagers in the world, she watched the popular blockbuster Titanic. The difference in her teenage experience was that she was breaking the law doing this. Furthermore, the movie shocked her by showing the male character dying for love and not the country. It is only natural for North Koreans like Park to be surprised at this foreign concept of love, because from birth they are taught they are taught to believe that love should only should only be directed towards a leader, and that there is nothing to envy in the outside world. Another surprising but typical event that happened to her in North Korea was that she saw her classmate's mother publicly executed. Her crime was simply lending a South Korean film to a friend. The second defector I would like to talk about is Jin Sang Chang. He was once a favored propaganda poet in North Korea before he betrayed the regime and defected. When he first met Kim Jong Il, he observed that the glorified leader was not as godlike as he and everyone else in the country had been taught to believe. Rather, he was wearing he was wearing heels to boost his height, and he spoke in rough slang, not a beautiful prose. He says that I quote. I realized he was not this godlike person we had all held up in pedestal. He was just human. As he got closer to the central power of the distinct country, he further realized the evident propaganda that he himself was helping to create to mask the corruption of the regime. Also, because of the propaganda, he says that people in North Korea have no concept of basic human rights. They do not know what they should be entitled to. So now that we are more aware of the extensive use of propaganda in North Korea, what can we actually do about it? Even though it may seem impossible, it's important to start small and increase the level of impact slowly. We propose two major solutions, a short-term solution that involves the United Nations and a long-term solution through education and NGOs. The, the long-term solution aims to change slowly changes the North Korean curriculum with the help from NGOs. Many North Korean schools have inadequate facilities, such as outdated equipment, and do not provide their students with the necessary resources that they need. So one way that the government could would accept this outside help from NGOs, as if the food aid and development of facilities were offered along with more well-informed textbooks, for example. This would be a non-threatening way to persuade the regime to adapt to a new curriculum. The main goal of this solution is to open the younger generation to a learning that covers international topics so that they can develop into a more informed population. Gradually changing the textbooks to cover a variety of topics is much more realistic than changing the media completely, as this might result in total rejection by the country and its people. Although targeting the younger generation and informing the educational institutions that they are exposed to, this long-term process might take longer than it is ideal. So we have an additional short-term pr process which invokes further cooperations with international media sources. 
The United Nations is, a, is, is an established, respected, and influential world organization that affects the media, that affects the member nations, and the human rights in those nations. In this case, the UN could impose its international pressure and use diplomacy skills to allow external intervention in North Korean regime to, co to cooperate with internationally established sources such as BBC, CNN, and Al Jazeera. This will surely mediate the censorship and consequences given to those uh, given to those North Korean citizens that reach out for more information beyond what is provided that provided to them by their national media source. We have a responsibility as a globally aware international community to not just ignore the facts and realize the harsh reality in North Korea. Even though it may seem foreign, it impacts us and everyone around us. We should take the necessary measures that we are capable of to recognize the problem and contribute to viable solutions to help the North Korean public. Hopefully, through the combined efforts of everyone to implement these solutions, we can transform the media so that the North Korean people can form their own opinions and enjoy the rights that we should all be entitled to.